So I'm a public health physician. I trained here at the McGill University and at University of Toronto, and then uh, I worked in research uh, for a number of years, uh, and then got into academic administration, and uh, went on to be the head of this agency when it started up uh, two and a half years ago. So we provide scientific and technical advice for the public health system in the province, and we support the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, local public health units and hospitals, family doctors, uh, healthcare providers across the province. We also provide the public health laboratory services for the province. Well, we've been building an organization from scratch, and so uh, two and a half years ago I was employee number one, and we're at about 900 now. So just growing so quickly is, is a huge challenge. Um, uh, the economic downturn has obviously been challenging for everyone and has meant that uh, we have not gr been able to grow as fast as uh, was originally envisioned. Um, and then finally we had to face this pandemic in our first year of operation. So uh, we weren't really fully staffed, uh, but we'd be ready to work with it. It's certainly way better prepared than it was at the time of SARS. Uh, we have our agency, we have quite a more uh, resources and in infection control in our hospitals. Um, we have a renewal of the public health lab facilities with new scientific capacity, the molecular testing facilities. Um, and we have uh, people that are able to work uh, across the province through regional infection control networks. And we have a lot of training programs for people throughout the health system on preparing for pandemics, preparing for emergency response. I think because of the experience that Ontario had with SARS, um, it has surpassed many other jurisdictions. Uh, so it has really been uh, taken very seriously with very significant investments. British Columbia has something similar and Quebec, uh, but not all the other provinces. We do have to make sure we continue on with programs like immunization, um, but we also have to look for, for new technologies and new approaches because uh, these diseases have been around for centuries and they're not going away and I'll just use the example of cholera which as we speak there's a major outbreak less than a three-hour plane flight away and any day someone could come home with cholera and our ability to fight that still remains very limited so the investments in research and technology development around how to approach infectious disease remain the biggest possible solution.